Welcome to the Tuning In Podcast, where I help everyday audio techs level up so they can get amazing results out of their shows and services. My name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. We're continuing with our series on live sound basics, the explain it like I'm five for the absolute beginner, or maybe it's the questions you've been afraid to ask even though you've been doing this for a little bit. Today, we are covering what in the world is the gain knob for on a live audio call. Console. So let's jump right in. One of the main roles or tasks we have as a live audio tech is managing the levels that come in from all of our sources. So a source might be a vocalist singing into a microphone. A microphone is a transducer, a fancy term for saying it is able to transform one form of energy into another. So specifically, this is taking a acoustical sound wave. So my voice right now, my vocal cords are moving and pushing air around and that creates a vibration and that is vibration moving through the air. And the microphone that's recording me right now is also gets vibrated by that sound, but it is able to translate or transduce that into electrons. So we are transforming sound waves, movements and air pressure into movements in electrons or voltage is another way to say it. So these variations in pressure then have a semi-linear transformation into electrons that move down a cable into an audio mixer. So that's what we're actually operating during the gig or the service is the mixer. So if I have a very loud vocalist on a microphone and then I get that same microphone over to another vocalist and it's coming into another input or channel on my desk. So I have two different uh, ways I can control vocalist A versus vocalist B, they may be different in level. And that's okay, that's, that's fine, and it's not a problem for us because one might be holding the microphone a little bit further away, it might be holding it closer, but our goal at the mixing console is to get them on a somewhat level playing field. And there's actually a Goldilocks zone to get there. Welcome to the Tuning In Podcast, where I help everyday audio techs level up so they can get scary good sound out of their shows and services. My name is Michael Curtis. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. We're continuing in our series in Live Sound Basics, the explain it like I'm five core stuff you gotta know. Maybe, or maybe if you're not a beginner, it's the questions you've been afraid to ask. Maybe there's some cracks in the foundation that we need to fill in. At any rate, you're welcome. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And we're gonna be continuing with the question, what in the world is the gain knob for on my audio console? And maybe asking the question, how do I use the gain knob versus the fader? Or maybe I use gain and you have no idea what that is. We're gonna be starting from ground zero and putting it in context of a live sound situation, making sure you under this, understand this tool clearly and know what to do with it. All right. One of our key roles and expectations as an audio tech and responsible for the sound at an event is managing the levels. So we usually think of that as like, well, how loud was it in the room? But we actually need to back all the way up to the beginning of what's called the signal chain. So a chain, a chain of links, signal moving through it from top to bottom. So at the very beginning is we have some sort of source. This could be a person singing, a drummer on a drum kit. This could be an iPhone plugged in for walking music. Any of those are fair game and provide something to us called a signal. A signal is a very blanket term for describing audio of some sort. Audio is cool in that it can exist or be measured in multiple domains you actually hear my voice right now through air and sound waves are either traveling from, you know, your MacBook speakers or the earbuds you have in right now. Uh, but what's happening first is I'm actually speaking and it's going into a microphone that you can't see, but it's the same thing that's happening on stage. Let's say you have a solo vocalist who's singing to a track. So this vocalist singing, her voice, her vocal cords are moving air and th those sound waves then move air, uh, variations in air pressure, but then a microphone, uh, its specific job is to capture this sound. So how does it capture it? It uses something called a transducer. Well, I guess it is a transducer, but there's several components in a microphone that make up the complete circuit in the way that's doing it. I'm not gonna worry about that today. I'll have a later episode on microphones specifically, but what it does is it transforms or transduces these airwaves into electrons. And we measure that with voltage. So we have 
variations in air pressure. And air pressure has positive, it has a compression and a rarefaction, it moves out. These are fancy terms, don't worry. We'll cover that in a later episode. But that is basically transduced and then just vi uh, vi not visualized, but actually represented in a different way with electrons moving down a wire. And we measured that in voltage. So too much voltage is too strong of a signal. Very weak voltage is very weak. So if I'm going to talk very softly versus talking very loud, we have a small air pressure, big air pressure, and similarly a small voltage in or a big voltage. So depending on the actual source, how loud I'm speaking or how quiet I'm speaking or how loud the drummer's playing their snare drum or not, is going to determine how loud or soft or strong or weak, more accurately, the signal is that goes into the microphone and then thus how strong or weak the signal strength, the voltage that's moving down the cable into the mixer. So let's say you are doing a sound check. One of the first things you're going to do is have your performer, again, let's go back to our vocalist, uh, sing at a normal volume for their set or their performance on a microphone. Let's assume they have good microphone technique. It's about a fist away from their mouth. They're singing into it. Everything's working correctly. And we have that signal that's now coming into our audio console. On a typical analog desk, and I guess this is similar for a digital as well, we have a channel strip that is a series of uh, technology or components that move together that can do things with the sound. That's an EQ, that's a compressor, that's a fader, there's a mute, all these different things. All I want us to worry about right now is what's at the very top at the very beginning, and that is the gain knob, which is attached to a preamp and then that flows down to a fader, okay? So let's start first with the gain knob, the point of our episode today. So the gain knob being attached to a preamp, let's break down that word pre and amp. Pre means before, then amp is amplification. So let's think about that. So before the amplifier, okay? So why might we need to do something before the amplifier? Well, downstream or later on in the signal chain, once our mix, what we're putting together, leaves our console, it's gonna to go to a speaker. Before that, it needs a power amp or something to make the signal much stronger so it can move the speaker, again, kind of our vocal cords in reverse, think about it, to push the air that makes the sound really loud. But it needs an adequate amount of signal to be able to do its job. If we have a very weak signal, the, the, the speaker's not gonna be very strong. And the same thing if this is going out to a live stream that's gonna play on an iPhone, it needs an adequ adequate level for it to function correctly. So the very first place we get that right is when the signal comes into our desk on the input on the channel strip and the first processor or thing that can change our audio signal is the preamp. And that again, attached to our gain knob. So we have that gain knob and we can turn it up by a certain amount. And gain, why we call it gain, is it can only increase level. There is another device or processor in line or in the signal path, what you will call a pad, that can reduce the level actually before it gets to the preamp. We'll talk about that again in a second. So again, I'm circling back to our vocalist who's singing and her signal is coming into a microphone and probably it's not gonna be very strong and that's okay. We need the preamp or the gain knob to turn up the level. On a typical gain knob or that circuit, we usually have about up to 60 decibels of gain on tap or level available to us within that knob. So if you're unfamiliar with the decibel scale, it's talking about a relationship between two things. So it's 60 de decibels greater than what? So all that's saying, if we turn it up, it is five, 10, 15, however many decibels louder. So how much is a decibel? Or just a, a quick rule of thumb here, if we increase something by 20 decibels, that's the same thing as increasing it by 10X. So we get, have to get comfortable with the decibel scale and, and, and maybe linearize it because decibels is a logarithmic scale and uh, we usually think linearly. So I'm gonna do another episode that on a later uh, podcast, but all, all that to say, if we need to increase the level on you know, a typical SM58 or just normal run of the mill $100 vocal microphone uh, on a normal vocalist, maybe up 35 or 40 dB, that's okay. We've actually increased the level 100X by that point to get to 40 dB. And if we can get up to 60 decibels, we multiply it again by 10, we actually have a thousand X increase in level available to us, which is crazy, which is why 
they use the decibel scale because it's really hard to put from you know two x all the way up to a thousand x on a little knob. So that's why we have the decibel scale uh, among other reasons. So they're singing. We actually want to increase the gain until we get to this Goldilocks zone because all of our equipment in our signal path or audio chain actually has what's called nominal levels. They have a nominal input level and then they have an output level max is how we usually think about it. They actually have an input level max too, but for nominal levels, basically they want the average level to come in to be at a certain amount and that's usually measured in volts but that's not actually the readout or the metering or the visuals that tell us how loud the signal is uh, so it does correspond with an actual voltage coming in but we're not going to worry about that it's usually a little over a volt for those keeping score at home but we are concerned when we they're singing the the signals coming in we can actually see the meters moving at our console we're going to turn up the gain knob add level until it's hitting on an analog desk zero vu it's usually when the green lights transition to orange or yellow or on a digital desk that is a negative 18 db full scale so that's 18 decibels before the top Earlier, I mentioned that every 20 dB means a 10X. We can also think about every 60 dB is about a doubling. So what we're doing here is filling up that container and getting it to an average level where we have 18 dB of headroom or three doublings is what we have. So an 8X. So that is a good way to set gain structure or make sure the signal coming in is at an appropriate level for the rest of the chain. This is also similar to when people talk about mic level versus line level. Something coming in mic level is a very weak voltage and needs help. That's why we have the gain knob to give it help to multiply or add uh, level to it versus being able to have something come at line level is assuming it already is at a nice, strong, healthy level about a volt. So if we're coming in at maybe a 0.01 volts, it needs to be multiplied by 100 to get to a volt, aka 40 decibels of gain. And then we actually have up to about 10 volts of headroom above that once we add everything together when it exits an audio console or a typical line level device and then goes to our speaker, which then multiplies it again to make it loud uh, or I guess strong enough to be able to move a speaker back and forth. So that's uh, the, the larger conversation of gain structure as managing levels throughout that entire system, but the preamp as a single function or single knob that sits at the beginning of an audio console, which is then attached to a gain knob. You will see the word gain used in other places, and that's usually just a variance in level. And someone may say, will you reduce the gain? The, the technical way to say that is, will you attenuate the level? But it, they mean the same thing functionally in our space. So our goal as an audio engineer is to not only set the level correctly for one source, but for every single source. So when a band is sound checking, we have a drum kit, guitars, bass, several vocalists. I'm doing that exact same thing with the preamp in every single source. And the thing is a kick drum, uh, you know, with a, a microphone right inside there being played loudly is likely not going to need as much help or as much gain, maybe only five or 10 decibels versus a quiet vocalist on a microphone and she's not holding it very close to her mouth. I might need 45 dB. That is a huge discrepancy in what our preamp is doing, but there's nothing wrong with that as long as you were not getting feedback or there's too much noise that's coming up. And we'll talk about in our later episodes our signal to noise ratio. But all that being said, Gain knobs may end up at several different values and anywhere in between depending on the source. But good practice is to make sure we're getting an adequate level out of the source first but try we, before we do all the heavy lifting with the preamp at the desk. All right, a recap. One of our main jobs is to manage the signal levels and how they are routed throughout our system. And there is a standardized Goldilocks zone once the signals have been captured or transduced by a microphone um, and are now electrical signals. And we use a preamp to usually increase the level of those signals to get there. And I forgot if I circled back to it, but a pad is a device that's in line before the preamp that can actually reduce the level if the signal coming into your desk is already too hot for what the preamp is expected to handle. So the preamp is controlled by the gain knob and has a voltage multiplier that increases the input level of that source plugged into that channel. Again, if it's too hot, we need a pad. If it's too low, we increase to get it to a level on our meters that is at a zero VU on an analog desk or negative 18 dB full scale on a digital desk. And 
that's basically where the green lights transition to orange uh, or yellow on most desks. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. My name is Michael Curtis, where I help everyday audio techs get amazing results out of their sound systems and services and shows. I'll catch you next time.